we connect with rockers, Terry Carr here with a uh, bass legend, man. This guy's an icon. He's a legend of, of playing music. I've got Jeff Pilson, who you know from Dokken, and of course now out touring with Foreigner, and you've got the end machine, and you're always, Jeff, you're always doing something. There's always <laughs> something going on, which is what I love about you. You've okay. been in rock music, and of course rock radio uh, music for, for decades now. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I would imagine that every time you turn a radio station on, there's something that you possibly could have involved, been involved with in, in a way, shape, or form that wow. probably resonates with you. Yeah, yeah, of course. I mean, you know, rock radio is, that was what I was brought up on. It's, it's my life. I love it. Yeah, yeah. Now, out touring with Foreigner, mm -hmm. um, and, and you've said really that when you join the band, it's always kind of felt like home for you. Mm -hmm. So so how do you find out that you could potentially be in Foreigner? I mean, it's an iconic band. You've got Mick Jones, who is just writer, producer. He's yeah, like yeah. this. You feel like if there's anything oozing out of his pores, their musical notes are attached to that. So, yeah, so how do you come to be in Foreigner? Let's do a little quick uh, reset. Right. Sure. Well, um, you know, in, in the year 2000, I, I got to be in a movie that came out in 2001, came out September 9th, 2001. You know, I remember, time, I yeah, remember. Not, not a great time to come out. But anyway, um, so I was in this movie, Rockstar, and in the movie with me was Jason Bonham, you know, son of legendary Led Zeppelin drummer, John Bonham. And <clears throat> Jason and I got along well in the movie, and we even wrote a song together and uh, didn't make the final cut of the movie, but it made the record. And so... Um, you know, like I say, we hit it off musically and personally. So in 2004, flash forward a couple years later, um, Jason was working with Mick Jones. And I think it was Jason that kind of talked Mick into actually revamping Foreigner, not just doing a solo thing or whatever. Wow. Wow. That's, that's so, intense. And they called me up and, and asked me to come down. And, and, you know, I came down and we, we, the chemistry was immediate. And, you know, at first it was kind of a, it was kind of pitched to me as being more of a weekend warrior kind of thing. Cause I was still producing bands at the time and everything. Um, but I loved it. And I, I instantly connected with Mick both personally and musically. I mean, musically, we just had this real powerful bond. Um, so, uh, the, but then of course, after that, we got Kelly Hansen. And once we got Kelly Hansen, I mean, the writing was on the wall. We were going to be a full tilt band. So, um, so yeah, I mean, I, I kind of stumbled into it in a way, in a weird way, but uh, it was very organic and it was very much about the music, which I love. Yeah, and I love Jason Bonham. I mean, I love that because, you know, you got that whole rhythm section brotherhood going on there, yeah. you know, and he's looking for a bass player. And then of all the bass players that Jason Bonham could recommend and Jason Bonham's looking for that, you know, synergy with a bass player, he thinks of yeah, you. Yeah. I mean, that's yeah, pretty yeah. awesome. That's pretty incredible. It was great. It was great. And, and, and again, it was, uh, it was, uh, verified by the fact of how strongly we all connected. And I mean, it was, it was really a powerful way to, to revamp a band and bring it out there again. We had, there was a lot of energy behind it. It was great. Yeah. And because people, you know, people have to realize too, bands, as you said, to connect, um, that's a very, very important thing. Yeah. To have. And was, not, not just on stage, but you're living together. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you yeah. went, I mean, look, you went through a lot in the eighties with Dokken. <laughs> not an yes. easy time for, for people because there was just so much going on. It was such a different lifestyle for everyone. So you go through all of that with Dokken, you know, and, and now, you know, you come out a little older and a, and a lot wiser. Yeah. Well, and, and, you know, Dokken as was very publicly uh, declared, you know, we, there was a lot of problems in that band personality wise. Um, not not in the exactly the way it was ever portrayed in the media, but it was it was definitely real and definitely there. And you know that that becomes stressful over time. You know, dealing with that kind of tension and everything. So it's great to be in a situation where that's not there. I mean, with Foreigner, um, it's just it, it's such a smooth sailing operation, and we all get along and love each other very very much. Um, and it's, it's a great bunch of musicians that all listen to each other very, very, very well. Um, there's no, the agenda is really about the overall and that's how it should be. Um, and it makes for a very productive and efficient organization that goes out there and kicks ass every night. And that's, that's my goal. I just want to 
be in a great band. <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah. Oh, and that and that band it. does. Now, did you and you and Kelly Hansen? Did you guys know each other from oh, you know sure. the California days, his Hurricane days, and everything? Yeah, I mean, actually, Kelly was actually, always to me. They were such an underrated band, Hurricane. I never understood why they didn't get to that level of the level that you guys, you know, in well, Dawkins got to. They, pro it was probably timing. They probably came a little bit too late in the in the cycle. To, to get to experience that. Uh, but yes, Kelly and I knew each other. In fact, we were neighbors. We lived very close to one another. We lived so close to one another that I got to tell you, uh, now we both moved since then, but um, at the time we were living so close and we had such similar addresses. They were one number off in the number, although the street was different, but it was just a couple of blocks from each other. That one time early on in Foreigner, we were at a winery and Kelly had requested them to send him a case of wine. And the post office delivered it coincidentally to my house instead. Oh, good wine, I, I hope. Was, I hope it was a good vineyard and not a sucky well, we, vineyard. We, I knew it was for Kelly, so I, I never paid <laughs> it. But, um, but, uh, but how, how ironic is that? That's <laughs> ironic. That is yeah. absolutely That's ironic. how close we, we live. Yeah. So, yeah, I've known Kelly forever. Um, we were never terribly close before Foreigner, but... Um, Certainly are now. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So we have a state theater date, uh, which is such a beautiful theater. You are going to love it because it's completely renovated. They just did the ribbon cutting for the whole new renovation of the theater. It is magnificent. Uh, oh, Friday, great. October 29th, stnj.org. So, you know, Foreigner, a band that's driven by those songs. Songs, you know, everything really in music, as you sort of reflect, you go, you know what? It's really all about songs. It doesn't matter. Iron Maiden songs, Foreigner songs. When the band has the songs, it's all about the songs. So what is it like to put out those songs and see, you know, be part of a band that everyone is singing every word to every song? Because I've been to Foreigner shows. Um, there's, not a t there's not a bathroom break in the set. You know, so, so what is that like to have that energy level from start to finish every night? Well, you know, the thing with Foreigners, we, we had 16 top 30 songs, which is an incredible achievement for any band. So that means that the set list is all familiar songs that people know. And that's a pretty, that's a pretty powerful thing. I mean, that, that, makes, that makes doing the set a lot easier when, when you know people are going to know the music. Um, so it's, it's great. You know, we, we get to experience people connecting with that music every night. And you really see how these songs mean something to people. They mean something to me. I mean, I, you know, Waiting for a Girl Like You is one of my favorite all-time songs. Feels like the first time was a huge song for me. You know, really, to me, that's like one of the most iconic first singles from a band ever. It's kind of right up there with more than Don't a Don't you feel like, too, like what you remember exactly where you were when you were, like, listening to, like, AM radio, you know, driving in a car with your dad or whoever, and those Foreigner songs, you know, those early, early songs from the first record came on, and, man, they were just, they were the gems. They were everything. Yeah. They were, you know, life-altering. Yeah, ex exactly. So, so yeah, so it, it means something to me as well. So um, it's it's a great... You kind of look at it as an honor and a privilege, um, as well as being a great tool, you know, to have all these great songs. And it does. It makes you understand that it is all about the song. It is all about the song. Because, you know, in Foreigner's case, it's not about the personnel, uh, even though the personnel were great. But it's about the music. And to me, that's how it should be. It should be about the music. You know, some bands are about image. We're about music. And I love that. And I've spoken to bands, you know, I've spoken to uh, people that have played in Thin Lizzy and have told me the same thing, you know, where, you know, some people will say, oh, well, how can you have Thin Lizzy without Phil? And then you'll be at a festival and you'll see 50,000 people singing right. those songs back to you. And you realize that really just is, it's a love letter and an homage to all of those incredible Incredible songs, those radio songs. So also talk to me about, I loved you and George Lynch put out the Heavy Hitters collection. And I thought that was so incredibly cool and something that was really warranted at a time where we just needed some friggin' fun for God's sake. So talk to me about who thought of that? How did you pick the tunes? Because there were some real great gems on that. Well, what happened was George uh, was re-releasing an old record of his um, through the label uh, Cleopatra that released the Heavy Hitters record. And the label, the, Brian at the label said, hey, listen, I want you guys to cover this song. And it was Somebody to Love by um, 
oh god i'm spacing out his name now the guy that did the song anyway it was it was it was a big pop hit and um he said you know i want you to do your version of it but you know i want you to take this pop hit and, and do it so we did and we got um we got the singer involved oh my god i'm spacing out his name now too a senior moment um anyway but uh Wow, hold on. How can I not think of the singer's name? Oh, my God. Can't think of it. Anyways, the guy who is, whoever's on Heavy Hitters. Oh, my God, I can't believe I can't think of his name. Will. Will, sorry. Anyways, Will, yeah, Will. Great singer. Um, and uh, so, anyway, we did this cover version for this record. It came out great. George had asked me to, to be involved in that song. We did it. Brian loved it. Then he offered us to do a whole record of it. So, we couldn't resist. It was early pandemic perfect time you know everybody was locked away we did everything remotely um it was it was a very very cool experience and yeah you're right we needed some fun yeah just just super fun and i love that you guys covered madonna and prince and duran yeah. duran the duran duran song when i listen to ordinary world which i really love that song Me it's too. such a beautiful feel song yeah, and yeah. you guys made it it was like i'm like thinking wow this is a really like a this is a metal song this this translates so well yeah. to I mean, being a heavy yeah. song and especially one of us too when you guys did the joan yeah. osborne song i mean which I, I, leads I, the collection i'm very off. proud of how we did that one because yeah i mean you know ordinary world we didn't do that much different than duran duran to be honest. we added heavy guitars and you know made put it in a little bit heavier key and all that kind of stuff uh but but with with one of us the joan osborne song we went we went we really went for it and i think it adapts itself so amazingly well Oh yeah, that and I'm very proud of it. So thank you. Appreciate yeah, it. yeah, loved loved that when I first heard it. And yeah, like I, I, as soon as that came in my inbox, you know, I, I just started listening to it, and I was just like, man, this is a really cool, um, you know, little little nugget of music here that you know I hope people know about. So yeah. what? So what do you want to do? What haven't you done that you want? Is there something you've been in movies and you've produced and you've written and you've been in giant you know, you're in a giant band now. And look, Dokken was one of those bands that back in the 80s, you look back now, there's not a day that I'm not on the radio or, you know, somebody's not requesting stuff from the 80s and 80% of the time it's a Dokken song. People want to hear Alone Again or Breaking the Chains or, you know, you were in a giant MTV band. I mean, do you sort of look back and say, yeesh, I, 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 had, a, I had a really incredible and full career. What else do you want to do? Is there anything that you've wanted to do and haven't done? Yeah, I still haven't written the greatest song of all time, so I'm going to keep working on that. That is, <laughs> that is not a lofty goal at all to I don't, have. I don't, I don't necessarily expect to get it, but uh, I, I'm going to keep trying, so there you go. So when you're out with Foreigner, do you have a favorite? Does it change every night? Is there one song where you're just like, oh, I can't wait to get to that song on the list tonight? Or does it kind of change up for you, I would imagine? What's your favorite Foreigner record? Uh, well, for, I think Foreigner 4 is one of the best Me records too. of all time. Oh, my gosh. But I also love the first record, too, a lot. So yep. there's a lot of things about that record that I love. So Two so very different first, records. Two very, very different, different records. records. Yeah. You know, so those especially... are my two favorites of, of the Foreigner catalog. There's a lot of other great stuff. But I don't have a particular favorite song. Um, I, you know, the set to me is like one big motion. So I don't think of it in terms, I don't break it up into songs. I think of it as a, a gigantic piece that we're presenting here. And, you know, you need all the parts of the piece in order to make it complete. So, um, I don't really think of it like that. What I, do, what I do think though, is I think, okay, is this the kind of place that's going to sound great? Are people hearing what they want? You know, are they going to hear it right? And we have a fabulous sound man, so I don't have to worry about that. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I just, I want to make sure that the presentation is correct every night. So I'm thinking more about that than in terms of individual songs. I just want to make sure the band is kicking ass. You know, I'm a musical director. It's kind of my responsibility. Um, so just want to make sure we're kicking ass and, and, and delivering as, as we should be. Can't wait to see you guys Friday, October 29th, a Friday night in New Jersey. And let me tell you, yeah. the crowds for shows in New Jersey with people having been locked down, everybody mm -hmm. is just so happy and excited. Yeah. And it's like yeah. we're sponges just soaking up every last bit of every note of every song. So I know it's going to be a magical night in New Jersey. Uh, State oh, Theater you. is the venue, <laughs> stnj.org. And... It has been such a pleasure, Jeff, hanging out with you. Thank so you, nice to catch up with you and chat and talk. 
And um, thanks for checking in. And we can't wait to see Foreigner in New Jersey. Great. See you on October 29th. Thanks. DHA's Reconnect with Rockers is powered by Karis Lock Company, your full-service locksmith, and Dover Dodge Chrysler Jeep Ram on Route 46 in Rockaway. Online at doverdodge.com. <laughs> 